Happy Sunshine, family. Lunacy's back. We're here for part nine of Hat J's post-trial filings. And this document number 151 is quite a doozy. So let's just jump right on over and take a look at the Standing Declaration of Dishonor and Honor. The cover sheet prepared by Francis Lloyd, the United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, the United States of America v. Heather Antucci Giraffe, number 3-17-CR-00082-002, Honorable Thomas A. Varlin, Chief U.S. District Judge, Honorable C. Clifford Shirley, Jr., Chief U.S. Magistrate Judge, Notice of filing. The defendant, Heather Antucci Giraffe, hereby files Standing Declaration of Dishonor and Honor, respectfully submitted by Francis Lloyd, Certificate of Service, that this document was filed through the electronic filing system of the courts. Okay, we've got Hat J's standard form here, original instruments. The United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, United States of America as a plaintiff, e. Randall Keith Bean, Heather Antucci Giraffe. Got all the different case numbers listed here, the one listing Deborah C. Poplin's initials, Thomas A. Varlin's initials, um, the different CCS versions, and we've also got the identity hearing uh, from Washington, D.C., uh, Deborah A. Robinson. All right, this is written in Heather's golf pencil. So all caps underline standing declaration of dishonor and honor, and I might say that it is bold as well. And in brackets, also, referred to as standing declaration of evidence of dishonor. Wow. So it's got two different names that it can be referred to as. Issue date, February 14th, 2018, Valentine's Day, and a little heart with the less than sign and the number three. All right, all bolds, all caps, underline, declarant, colon. I am original, who is also known by the appellation, that's another word for name, Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, and as a duly factualized, excuse me, and as duly factualized with lawful and legal identification, standing, title, ownership, authority, and authorization, having been duly made, issued, registered, secured, guaranteed, verified, validated, certified, and noticed, beginning July 30th, 1972, that's her date of birth, and documents 1825, specially declarations of factualized trust, addendum of law, presumption and perpetuity, cancellation of true bill, Document numbers 43, 54, 56, 98, 101, and 102, all and each restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full, without prejudice, ab initio, that just means from the beginning, nunc pro tunc, that's the retroactive part, praetera praetera, moreover, furthermore, with due oath having been duly made, issued, registered, secured, verified, validated, and noticed to only declare true, accurate, and complete with full responsibility, accountability, and liability. Looks like Roman ID dot, or is that Roman num hmm. I'm looking at this right here. It looks like capital I, lowercase d, period, and underlined. 
restated and that I am conscious and competent to make said declarations without prejudice. <clears throat> Ab initio, nunc pro tunc, praetera praetera. Roman numeral one, being of sound mind, even sounder consciousness, and over 21 years of age, Roman numeral two, being committed to steadfast being committed and steadfast to preserve and promote the public confidence in the integrity, impartiality, and lawfulness of all systems and service of humanity and all of existence, including, but not limited to, the financial and judicial systems of the United States and Roman numeral three. Being committed and steadfast to restore the integrity impartiality and lawfulness of all systems in service of humanity and all of existence when they are in defect and dishonor, including but not limited to the financial and judicial systems of the United States. And Roman numeral four, being committed and steadfast to restore the public confidence in the integrity I'm thinking that word is impartiality. It looks like impartiality. I think that's impartiality. And lawfulness of all systems in service of humanity and all of existence during and after defects and dishonor are corrected. And Roman numeral five, being with firsthand personal knowledge of the defects and dishonor of all systems and service of humanity and all of existence, including but not limited to the human rights abuse of, we got documents 18, 43, 54, 55, 56, 74, 98, 101, and 102 restated. Letter A, and we're going through some definitions here. Subrogation as the substitution of one person or group by another in respect of a debt or insurance claim accompanied by the transfer of any associated rights and duties. Theft. Act of taking another's property without their permission or consent with the intent to deprive them of said property. Commandeer. To arbitrarily or force, or force to, I wonder if this means the, the arbitrary or forcible possession of, an, of another, their property, or their rights. Arbitrary meaning course of action or a decision that is not based on reason or judgment, but on personal will or discretion without regard to rules or standards. Arbitrary implies bad faith, and it may be used synonymously with tyrannical or despotic. Fraud. Wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. Terrorism. Use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims includes, quote, financial terrorism, end quote, the funding of terrorist acts. <clears throat> Slavery, involuntary indenture to another. Subversion, a systematic attempt to overthrow or undermine a governance or political system by persons working secretly within. Misprison, Concealment of treason or felony by one who is not a participant in the treason or felony. Concealment and failure to report treason or fel felony. Neglect or wrongful performance of official duties. Collusion. Secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy, especially in order to cheat or deceive others. Anarchy. A state of disorder due to the absence of authority. A state of disorder due to the non-recognition of authority. 
anarchy is exactly where we get to when all of us reclaim the authorship of our perceptions. The only author that or authority that we look to then is ourselves. Letter K, Article 5, A through J. So all of those definitions above restated. And the financial and judicial systems of the United States along with other supporting systems, branches, departments, and agencies thereof being systematically used to commit said human rights abuses, specifically and particularly including but not limited to 1. Pursuant to secret, illegal processes and deceptive acts and practices as set forth in affidavit in support of abatement Ignorantia judicis est calamitas innocentis. The ignorance of the judge is the misfortune of the innocent. So that's Latin there. Ignorantia judicis est calamitas innocentis. The ignorance of the judge is the misfortune of the innocent. A true, correct, and accurate copy annexed hereto and restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full, especially page 1, number 1 through number 37 on page 4, Annex A. And we remember Annex A is uh, her making notes on document 98, her precipe. So number 2, article... Roman numeral 5.k.1, above, restated, and declarant has first-hand personal knowledge of said secret illegal processes and deceptive acts and practices, and the monetary instruments created thereby, lawful and unlawful. Right here, she's saying she's a whistleblower, that she's been in there, she's seen the way it goes down, and she's got that light. That's what this is saying right here. Let's check out what letter K was. Oh, okay. That's just all the definitions restated. All right, number three. That the above reference titled case numbers, 3 colon 17 dash CR dash 82, 1 colon 17 dash MJ dash 531 dash DAR, and all matters relating to these are contrived proof and due documentation in the public record of said secret illegal processes and deceptive acts and practices as set forth in Annex A, restated, especially number 1 through 37 and Article 5, A through J, Restated, including but not limited to A. Separate acts done by foreign agents as set forth in documents 98 and 101, restated, and Separate acts done by foreign agents as set forth in first due notice of due acceptance of evidence of separate acts of foreign agents pursuant in part to standing precipes number 2 and number 3. Document number 101 restated with issue date of February 14th of 2018 and filed and served congruently on February 21st, 2018. With this declaration restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full and those in letter C, <clears throat> Standing due notice of due acceptance of evidence of separate acts done by foreign agents, pursuant in part to standing precipes number two and number three, document 101 restated with issue date February 21, 2018, and filed and served congruently on February 21, 2018, with this declaration restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full, and letter D. For the sole purpose of exposing said defects, dishonor, secret illegal processes, 
and deceptive acts and practices by known foreign actors and agents, including, but not limited to those in, one, Federal Reserve Board, and two, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, and three, the United States Treasury, and four, United States Department of Defense, and five, United States District Courts, including but not limited to the United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, and Clerk of Courts, and six, United States Department of Justice, including but not limited to the U.S. Attorney, Knoxville Office, or Knox Office, Eastern District of Tennessee, and seven, United States Department of Justice, Bureau of Investigations, including but not limited to headquarters in Washington, D.C., New York office, and Knoxville, Tennessee office, and eight, USAA Bank, and nine, DTC, DTCC, GMEI, and other clearinghouses, I'm not sure exactly what those initials stand for right now. Ten, we've got the AIIB and CIPS. Uh, I don't recall what those are right off the top of my head, but these look like the electronic clearinghouse systems, our, our, our digital banking system is what she's referencing here. Letter E, Article K, Section 3, subsection D, so the one we just read above, restated, and all documentation, evidence, and proof is a matter of record within the record keeping of each entity, agency, bureau, department, and branch thereof, and each said record duly restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full. Letter F. And for further purpose of duly establishing the ignorance, incompetency, and national security threat of having matters and actions of secret, illegal processes, and deceptive acts and practices, one, tried before an uninformed, misled, and prejudiced quote-unquote jury, two, brought by perpetrators of human rights abuse and corruption, Three, presided over by perpetrators of human rights abuse and corruption or otherwise in a conflict of interest as stated above, Article uh, Roman numeral 5.K.1-3, through three, restated, <clears throat> and Roman numeral 6. Article Roman numeral 5, in entirety, restated, and that each private corporation operated under the guise of government existing on this planet was in the same or similar state of defect and dishonor and secret illegal processes and deceptive acts and practices and human rights abuse and corruption and Roman numeral 7. Articles Roman numeral 5 through 6 above restated and that beings from all over this planet and all of existence did act and continue to act in honor to completely terminate said defects, dishonor, processes, acts, and practices as set forth and done, documents 18 and 25, specially Declaration of Addendum of Law, Presumption and Perpetuity, restated and, in, and including but not limited to A. Termination, or excuse me, terminating or arresting any and all unlawful and illegal private money systems, issuing, collection, legal enforcement systems, operating slavery systems. ID period. And letter B, removal by reconfiguration or recalibration of all principals, agents, beneficiaries, and facilitators of said operating slavery systems, ID period, and the unified efforts of all of existence to enhance and make complete the awareness of humanity 
of the existence of said defects, dishonor, processes, acts and practices, and human rights abuses and corruption. And, letter D, by completely unified efforts of all of existence to enhance and make complete the application of complete consciousness by all of the acts of honor done and combining, excuse me, and continuing to be done, and E, the unified support of the universal cleanup to all beings on this planet acting in honor, documents 98 and 101 restated and including but not limited to, one, support and resources to the United States militaries, specifically Hawaii, January 13, 2018. That's interesting that here we got a, a date that's plucked out that's just, uh, you know, less than two months ago. Support and resources to the United States militaries, Japan, January 16th, so three days later. And support and resources and sources ready for immediate appropriation and allocation. Documents 1843, 54, 55, 56, 98, and 101. Restated, specially, Declaration of Addendum of Law, Presumption and Perpetuity. Subject to additional ledgering of separate acts incurred after October 18, 2017, 901 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Roman numeral 8. All being in honor, completely embraced, accepted, and amplified by all of existence. And Roman numeral 9, articles 1 through 8 above restated and all said defects and dishonor and human rights abuses and corruption cease and desist forthwith in order that all being in existence is in due honor. This standing declaration of dishonor and honor, with issue date of February 14th, 2018, is duly made, issued, filed, served, and noticed without dishonor for due cause, with my full responsibility, accountability, and liability, and in and by my lawful and legal identification, standing, authority, authorization, title, ownership, and rights as declared herein, restated, without prejudice, ab initio, nunc pro tunc, and praetera praetera, dated February 14, 2018, signed Heather Antucci Giraffe, printed original Heather Antucci Giraffe, Certificate of Service. I duly certify that on February 21, 2018, a true, accurate, and complete scan of the foregoing original and its Annex A were made and caused to be electronically filed. Notice of this filing will be sent by operation of the alleged court's electronic filing system to all alleged parties indicated on the electronic filing receipt. Said alleged parties may access this filing by said electronic system. Date February 21st, 2018. Signed Heather Antucci Giraffe. Printed original Heather Antucci Giraffe. Annex A. Well, this doesn't list a case number, doesn't list a plaintiff or defendant, U.S. District Court, District of, it doesn't list either of those, affidavit in support of abatement, ignorantia judicis est calamatis innocentis, the ignorance of the judge is the misfortune of the innocent. A thiant who goes by the appellation, plaintiff's name, a living, breathing, flesh and blood man living under the divine laws of God the Father and creator of the boundless universe, being of sound mind and over the age of 21, whose advocate is Yeshua the Christ, to reserve all rights being unschooled in law and not waiving counsel, knowingly and willingly declare and duly affirm in accordance with full intent 
for preserving and promoting the public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary that the following statements and facts by special visitation in the matter in reference, case number, and any matter relating to this, are of affiant's own first-hand knowledge does solemnly swear and depose that affiant is competent to state the matters set forth herein. Excuse me a second. The affiant has personal knowledge and belief of the facts stated herein, and all the facts stated herein are true, accurate, and complete. This declaration of facts is based on affiant's own first-hand knowledge and belief. Mark affiant's words. I, defendant's name, executor for the defendant, say to we que trust, do notice the court of my letter <clears throat> rogatory to the United States, enter the court or district, and demand my name be cleared of the alleged criminal case for the reasons set forth below. One, I have learned that this alleged court that has scheduled a case cause claim against me is not really a court as per Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States, but rather a tribunal operated as a private corporation apparently under the delegated authority granted by the corporate constitution for the United States at Article 1, Section 8, Clause 9. I have also learned that the charges are commercial as clearly defined in the Code of Federal Regulations, 27 CFR 72.11. My appointed attorney in court do not seem to understand this regulation, and as such my attorney is incompetent to defend the defendant, which is why he has been provided with a letter of instruction. 2. I have learned of the fraud that goes on behind the scenes of these alleged criminal cases slash penal actions, which are really civil claims and equity, and the steps taken to securitize these civil claims without giving full disclosure to the people. I am hereby letting the court know that I am opting out of my contract and do not authorize any documents regarding me or my Setuike Trust to be securitized and sold to any investigator, investors, etc. Three, the fraudulent process is as follows. All cases are civil, though often fraudulently called criminal. The courts are operating under trust law, assuming the defendant is a... Hmm decedent after finding the alleged defendant guilty. The court clerk fills out a, de well, excuse the extra zooms that are delayed there. The courts are operating under trust law, assuming the defendant is a decedent after finding the alleged defendant guilty. The court clerk fills out a depository resolution agreement. Since the defendant is a decedent, the court official considers themselves as the beneficiary. When a judge asks if the person understands, he or she is asking if the person is liable for the bond. I am not responsible for the bond of this these cases, but will appoint the judge as trustee fiduciary and be the beneficiary of all proceeds. The judgments are stamped with something to the effect of pay to the order of on the back and taken to the federal discount window. The judgment now becomes a note. The notes are pooled together and then become securities, which are yet again pooled together and sold as bonds. Said bonds are liens against me. The United States Attorney's Office has put code number NAICS, or North American Identification Security Classification. Said NAICS number enables the U.S. Attorney's Office to trade globally on all securities. 9. All U.S. federal courts are registered with the Department of Defense, where they are registered with CCR, or Contractors Central Registration, under the Department of Defense. 
which has another department called DLIS, or Defense Logistics Information Service, which issue a case code, which means a commercial and government entity in which everything corresponds with their bank account. 10. Said U.S. Attorney's Office and Courts have a Dun & Bradstreet number. Interesting. Everything filed... So, I don't know. So, I, I, I don't want to assume anything here, guys. Um, I have my Master's in Business Administration, and I have used some publications by Dun & Bradstreet before and doing analysis of companies and... Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, what Dun and Bradstreet do, and also Standard and Poor's, they will rate different companies uh, for their what their their financial health, and they will take a look at the economic uh, industry and any emerging industries that might be threats or opportunities, and kind of give you a number that allows you to. Hmm. kind of mathematically describe the amount of risk there is in investments of this particular company. And so Dun & Bradstreet uh, have generated this kind of data for many different companies. And it's very interesting to me, this item 10 here, that the U.S. Attorney's Office and the courts have Dun & Bradstreet numbers. That, that means that, the, that they have undergone analysis for how risky investing in those entities is. That's really interesting to me. That's, that's my nutshell best guess as to what number 10 is all about. Number 11, everything filed into the court is securitized without the knowledge or consent of the people of all parties. 12. All criminal cases not heard in an Article III court or District Court of the United States are really civil. However, the courts again commit fraud by labeling the case as criminal. All cases which are pled out or have a guilty conviction label or have a guilty conviction label the civil defendant through unlawful conversion as felons when they are not. This is fraud upon the people at large and certainly fraud upon the alleged defendants. 13. The bank account is at a Federal Reserve Bank of New York in New York City, the depository. All securities are then deposited to the DTC in New York. An escrow agent is used as a go-between between the clerk office and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The securities probably end up, not end of, the securities end up being listed through the Sixth Circuit and then sent to the DTCC, the clearinghouse, who lists the securities for trading. All of the lawyers involved are acting as private debt collectors according to the FDCPA Title 15, Section 1962. The Bar Association exempts them from having to be registered as such. However, they operate through call warrants, which are like a put or a pee call. Doing margin calls is where they convert a case through use of a case number to buy equity securities, similar to a writ of execution. Everything filed into the court is securitized and turned into negotiable instruments and turning them into securities. These items are sold commercial items calling them distress debts, unifund. These items are now pooled together in what is now called a hedge fund where they are sold globally. Anytime there is risk management involved, it is for the securities. This is an underwriting company. When hedge funds are going into global market, they go through Euler Hermes, a bondholder, an underwriting company and subdivision of Alliance SE of, uh, I'm guessing that's Munich, Germany, PIMCO Bonds. 
uh, number 20. After nine months, all power is converted to a security status. This is defined in Title 15, Section 78C, Subsection 9 and 10, and is now considered to be investment contract. The paper is endorsed to become a security, and the trust is then collapsed. 21. The courts have an account with the IMF, or International Monetary Fund, under Interpool. The judges involved and the U.S. attorneys involved do not have an, an accessible oath of office because they cover up the fact that the oath of office is between them and the International Monetary Fund. Wow! I don't know... Like, I don't know what the support is for this particular document with all these different uh, ideas, you know, uh, numbered out. But that last one is potent. The courts have an account with the International Monetary Fund under Interpool. The judges involved and the U.S. attorneys involved do not have an accessible oath of office because they cover up the fact that the oath of office is between them and the IMF. Wow. 22. The U.S. judges and U.S. attorneys are actually employees of the IMF and have expatriated out of the United States. They are now unregistered foreign agents under Title 22, which states foreign agents must be registered. Wow. This is mind-blowing, guys. 23. The court judgments are deposited with the IMF. Since this case obviously involves me, I have a drawing right to all proceeds. See the UCC 3-305 and 3-306. The court judgments are monopolized according to Title 16, which is a violation of antitrust laws and also unfair trade practices. Indictments, line item 24, indictments are true bills, meaning they are negotiable instruments. The district attorney failed to give me a 1099 OID showing me as the recipient of funds, which is fraud upon me in my case. I have been fraudulently amalgamated to this corporate created entity as a presumed trustee ex maleficio through the process of impressment and herein held responsible for the liability of the associated public charges. I am demanding a copy of, my, of the 1099 OID unless the court wishes to close this account. 25. The unlawful funds through fraud and deception are deposited in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and they have not been paid the tax on this income or they have not paid tax on this income. According to the IRS, this is a Section 7201 of Title 26 violation, willful failure to file with the intent to evade tax. A copy of the depository resolution agreement was not made available to me from the clerk of court. The clerk of court makes the deposits into the Federal Reserve Bank of New York via electronic funds transfers, or EFTs. The clerk has a PIMA, or private money, or sorry, PMIA account, or private money investment account, which also has a government code. According to the clerk praxis, the clerk of the U.S. District Court is the Register Admiralty. According to the IRS Section 6209 Decoding Manual and the ADP Automated Data Processing Manual, all 1099s are Class 5 gift and estate taxes. I am asking for a 1099 OID in this case, as I am not willing to gift you the proceeds. I am hereby demanding the proceeds in their entirety, including interest. 29. I have never pledged my rights or my body to any gifting program, in INC, including any court or court process. 30. 
I am not a charitable organization. I demand all funds from the cases, current and past, be sent to me within 30 days, or I will file complaints to the IRS and SEC explaining the fraud and theft committed upon me and issue a 1099 OID. <clears throat> 31. I demand my name and my Satui Q Trust name be removed from any and all government databases indicating bad credit, commercial liens, and or titles of criminal, felon, and or convicted felon be removed immediately and permanently. Nunc pro tunc, praetera praetera. 32. I hereby demand a copy of the depository resolution agreement from the clerk of court and a W-9 from the judge and the U.S. attorneys involved, if you wish to proceed with this case. 33. I hereby notice the court that I am the executor of the Satui K. Trust of, the defendant's name, according to Title 26, Section 303 and Section 7701, companies, corporations, and associations and trusts are all decedents. This means my all cap Capital letter name is a legal estate. My all capital letters name falls into this class. I direct all of my affairs and financial affairs of defendant's name. I demand this case account be closed and no further steps be taken to securitize it. I thereby demand the court to notify local agents and agencies to put me on a do not disturb list so that we do not go through this again. I am confident that the courts and its offices want to follow the law and perhaps were unaware of the processes of civil and criminal cases. 37. I expect no further harassment from rogue, unregistered foreign agents. I affirm that all of the foregoing is true and correct. I affirm that I am of lawful age and am competent to make this affidavit. I hereby affix my own signature to all these affirmations in this entire document with explicit reservation of all my unalienable rights and my specific common law right not to be bound by any contract or obligation which I have not entered into knowingly, willingly, voluntarily, and without misrepresentation, duress, or coercion. Any man as well as any woman who intends rebutting this affidavit of particular defendant's name shall do so in the manner of this affidavit using Christian name, baptismal name, name given at birth, given in upper and lower case format, not set in all capital letters, being a fully liable living breathing man woman responsible for everything that such a man woman says and does. The affiant, a living, breathing, flesh and blood man, does swear and affirm on affiant's own unlimited commercial liability that affiant has scribed and read the foregoing facts contained in this affidavit and that in accordance with the best of the affiant's firsthand knowledge and conviction, such are true, accurate, and complete and not misleading. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The use of the notary below is for identification only and does not grant any jurisdiction to anyone. Further affiant saith not, subscribed and sworn without prejudice and all rights reserved. There's a signature line, and then it says, In 1933, all the higher judges, top attorneys, and U.S. attorneys were called into a secret meeting, and this is what they were told. America is a bankrupt nation. It is owned completely by its creditors. The creditors own the Congress, they own the executive, they own the judiciary, and they own all the state governments. Take silent judicial notice of this fact. Should be this fact, not his fact right here. But never reveal it openly. Your court is operating under admiralty jurisdiction. Call it anything you want, but do not call it, quote, admiralty, end quote. Well, this is a real interesting document uh, that Heather has filed with the courts here. 
I've never seen or heard of anything like this being filed with the courts before, uh, especially on the tale of such a mind-blowing series of events that we'll call the indictment, arrest, and trial of Randy and Heather. If you got any love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy at protonmail.com. Uh, there's uh, been some more filings. I believe we're through the February 23rd filing. The only other documents are just the uh, receipts that the court system has given out for all this latest round of filings. All of those receipts are in the Dropbox too. Uh, you can go check the link for my Dropbox, the Hat J folder down in the Show More section. And I will be back with some more videos soon. I love you guys a lot. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.